I'm revisiting this Socket 7 motherboard I purchased and unboxed in a video back in September of 2020. After some research, I found that this motherboard came out of a Compact Bersario 5150 series desktop PC. These computers came out in 1998, and they were equipped with AMD K6-2 350 MHz processors. Different models in the series came with different amounts of RAM and different types and sizes of drives. This board has a SuperSocket 7 CPU slot and a VIA Apollo MVP3 chipset. It has three SD RAM slots that support PC100 RAM. The audio is an ESS audio drive, ES1869, and the video is onboard ATI Rage LT Pro AGP with 4 megabytes of video memory installed on the motherboard. There is a SODIMM slot here that allows you to insert additional video memory up to 4 megabytes to bring this whole system to a maximum of 8 megabytes of VRAM. The board requires an AT power supply with this third connector that provides an additional 3.3 volts in order for the board to meet PCI standards. From my unboxing video, I pointed out the unfamiliar port here and assumed it was for a touchscreen display, such as what you would find at a cash register or other point of sale location. Turns out this port is a Visa Digital Flat Panel or DFP interface, a successor to VGA and the failed alternative to DVI or Digital Visual Interface, which itself went on to achieve widespread implementation. You can find adapter cables that will allow you to connect this PC to a monitor with a DVI port using this DFP connection. There's not much else to say about this motherboard, so let's move on to what I plan to do with it. Here I have the PC case for a Compact Bersario 5240. I bought this on eBay after I learned what the motherboard went to, but couldn't find any 5150 cases. The design inside and out is identical to the 5150, the only difference being the number badge on the front. The important parts of this PC case are the proper back panel I.O., the correct motherboard mounting layout, the front panel power button board, and the AT power supply with its three connectors. This case did not come with an optical drive, but it did come with an LS120 super disk drive in the floppy drive slot. My goal here is to put together a working stock Presario 5240, meaning as close to factory specs as possible. This motherboard can do that, but I'll have to upgrade the CPU first. Let's get started. Let's get the case open and access the motherboard tray. I love this design choice, where the entire tray comes out from the side after removing just two screws. It has a small pivot point so that it swings out and then back in, making all the necessary cable connections to the motherboard much easier to access with the power supply in place. Once the motherboard is secured on the tray, it's time to upgrade the CPU. We're upgrading the 350MHz K6-2 to a 400MHz version that shipped with the 5240. This means changing some jumper settings so the board works properly. Originally, this board had a passive heatsink mounted to the CPU. Since we're upgrading, I decided to upgrade to active cooling for it. Here I am mounting a fan heatsink combo and plugging it into the fan header located nearby. The RAM going into this system is a single stick of 64 megabyte PC100 SD RAM. There's nothing more we need to install on the motherboard for now, so it's time to put it back in the PC case and start connecting all the cables. Here we install the optical drive, a CDRW drive from 2001. It's newer than the time frame this PC came out, but I didn't have it an older working drive I could use. In the top is the hard drive tray, and I'll be installing a Seagate 10GB IDE drive running at 5400 RPM. Since I love making more work for myself, I decided to not plug in the IDE cables to the motherboard before securing it in the case. This means cable routing is going to be a pain, and I ended up just removing the power supply in order to get everything where I wanted. it. 
Okay, with everything installed, plugged in, and power supply reinstalled, it's time to power this PC up. The PC successfully powers up, detects the hardware changes, and boots into the Windows installation that was already on the hard drive. With the major hardware changes completed and the PC booting to the OS, we're going to stop here for now. Next time we visit this, we'll reinstall the operating system from the Compaq Quick Restore Discs for this PC that I found on archive.org, and then do some gaming and benchmarking to see how well it performs. From there, we have some upgrade paths to follow to see just how far we can push this PC. Stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.